Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz. And today, I really want to talk a few minutes about hope, how we choose hope, and also open up the forum to take a, a couple of questions for, from people for quick intuitive readings. So, and we'll also do a meditation and a crystal of the week. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm Robin Fritz. I'm an intuitive and spiritual consultant and certified past life regression specialist based in Seattle, Washington. And I am thrilled to be here with you today. And again, we're going to be talking about hope. So um, let's start out like we do each week talking about what's going on in our lives, what's going on in the world and bringing that all together to support mind, body and spirit um, with the crystal phalanx. So here's your chance to take a deep breath, connect to this ancient crystal and bring community together to support each other. So as um, we run down your uh, energy body through the top of your head to the bottom of your feet and back up again, think about what hope means to you. And then we'll talk about it briefly. So taking your attention to the top of your head, breathing down your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Just let go of the cares of the day, just relax in your chair and just feel this energy and connection running through you and through the community. So starting at the top of your head, breathe down your face, your shoulders, your chest, your hips, your knees and your feet. The top of your head, to the bottom of your feet. Just feel yourself getting settled in your chair, feeling that energy surge through you, now breathing up from your feet to the top of your head. You can welcome in this healing energy. Fallon is citrine Lemurian quartz. So you'll feel this connection um, wherever you are in the world. So breathing up from your feet, past your knees, your hips, your chest, your shoulders, your face, and the top of your head. So just feel that it's good, solid energy. And again, thank you for joining me and hello and thank everyone for chiming in there and saying hi or waving your hands or whatever. I really enjoy being here with you each week. So um, today I want to do a couple readings for people. Um, so uh, first few people put a few questions up that you'd like us all to look at with you. But I really want to talk a few minutes and really just a few minutes about choosing hope. You know, wherever you are in the world today, it seems like we're looking at unrest and change. And as we observe it, and as we're locked into this 24 seven news cycle, we feel the effects wherever we are. Um, that's just the way our world works right now. Um, in the last few weeks, though, I've met people who are really depressed. Um, and, and chime in with your questions. I'll take a moment here to ask um, to write it down. So, you know, again, I've met people in the last few weeks are really depressed here in the United States. We have a big election coming up tomorrow all over the country. And um, people are just worried and they're upset and they feel that there's no future for us or for the planet, that evil and greedy people will just take over and run the world and that the good guys always lose. They ask, how can we change the world? Is it even possible? And if it is, how do we lead the way in that? Well, I think one way is by choosing hope. And I know that may sound too easy for people, um, but hope reminds us to look for the upside of events and situations, to look up, to look past the current, to look towards the future. Um, and I know there's no great thing that comes from losing our loved ones, from losing a job or a home, from losing our health, from seeing elections not go the way we want, from seeing uh, what looks like increasing discourtesy and even danger coming at us from other people. And it isn't, um, it isn't always easy, 
But um, we can choose to look at it in a different way. We can choose to acknowledge the things that happened to us and that happened to the people around us and to go on knowing that things can change and we can work for the change. And that takes hope. That takes believing in yourself, believing the world can change, um, believing that it's worthwhile, believing that each of us matters. And um, I want to tell you that I do know about hope. For um, many years ago, I was nine years old when my 14-year-old brother died. Um, because it happened on November 1st, it's been on my mind this last week. Today is the 5th of November. And I think about what happened in that time. None of us were prepared for losing him. Um, and it destroyed my family in many ways. Uh, but over the course of all these years, I've learned that we can do two things when faced with trauma and disaster. We can choose to dwell on them or we can choose to remember them and to put them in the context of our lives and to move on and do what I call choosing hope. Throughout my love, uh, long life, I have lost many loved ones. I have suffered through personal and um, national catastrophic things. And I mourned and I reflected and I picked myself up and went on. And I chose hope. And I know that you can choose hope too because the world needs you. The world needs all of us together. So keep choosing hope. And I know on a dark day, it doesn't feel like it's possible, but I've been there since I was nine. I've been there. I've had the choice to give up or to move on, and I've chosen to move on. And I think if I can do something, anybody can. So that's my message of hope for you today. And again, I want to thank everyone for um, joining me. And I saw a couple of questions. Um, Christine, I don't know what you mean by is it time for me? Is it time for you to win? It's time for all of us to win, to have what we want in our lives and to look at what that means for us. Uh, Dominique, will you be in love again when you choose to love yourself first? Um, and that's the biggest thing. A lot of us dwell on wanting another person to love. Um, for me, my soulmates have always been my animal family, even when I was a little kid. Um, and to me, it didn't matter because it's the soul that I'm attracted to, not, not the body necessarily, but most of us want a human loved one. And I know that it never really works out completely well for us until we choose to love ourselves first, because that is where all the attraction comes from. That's where your attraction to life comes from and where your loved one will look at you and go, oh, wow, this person is really connected, connected to themselves. So uh, don't let people tell you that you're not good enough, Dominique, because you are. And when you're ready for that, um, you look around and there are, and that's why I keep talking about hope. There are plenty of wonderful people out there in the world and it just takes confidence and hope to keep looking for them. Um, other questions. Oh, Diamond, are any of, do any of your ancestors have anything or when is your breakthrough coming? Okay, so ancestors are a little bit more involved topic as is talking with the dead, which I prefer to do in private sessions, although I will be traveling around the country doing group events as well as doing group events like this on Facebook and other um, other. Uh, potential media events, um, other webinar series, for example, helping us come together and connect with our ancestors and our dead on our own. Um, Diamond, look out six months from now. Six months from now, there's going to be a break because you've been working on changing your mindset in that time to making it happen. You know, uh, there's a lot in the metaphysical world right now that says, oh, the, the universe loves us and it's all there right there. And it's, you know, nothing happens for a reason or everything happens for a reason. Um, and I believe that we make our own future 
and um, we have to get down, map it out, map out where you're going to go and how you're going to go and what that breakthrough looks like for you. This summer, I thought I had a big breakthrough and something I wanted for a long time. And I found out that, in fact, I didn't want it. And what I wanted, what I thought I wanted all my life was already right here with me. And um, it was a huge eye opener for me. So look at what you really want and how that presents itself, what it looks like when you fleshed it out. Because for me, something I thought I wanted all my life turned out to be actually the thing that was holding me back. So think about that. Map it out. Beth, does your mom know your grandma? <laughs> you know what? I love that question. Um, you know, because um, when I do sessions with people and uh, we talk to their loved ones, and it's not just identifying them for you. I only do mediumship sessions for people who already know that the soul continues after death, the consciousness continues after death, and they want to have a real conversation with their loved ones and, and not just get identifying characteristics. And um, that's possible because I work with my dad who will bring the dead to come and speak to us. But Beth, I have to tell you that um, our loved ones do check in with us from time to time, even when we're not even thinking that's even possible. And um, I know that your uh, mom notices that, that she's a grandma. And if you pay attention to your little one, you may notice um, that little one looking around the room, if it's still a baby, uh, looking around the room, or if it's older, um, kids up to about five or six, um, actually, um, their parents come to me like, what's going on with my kid? And it's like, oh, the grandparent is visiting and checking in and saying hi. So be comforted with the fact that they are aware of what's going on with us. They are off on new adventures, just like you are living your life. Um, but they do check in with us. And um, yes, and it would be delightful to talk to your loved ones. Um, I'm available for private appointments for that. And um, I like to keep that off this kind of a forum because they're very personal. And I like to only share those stories um, when people give me permission for that. But it is possible. Um, I also will be doing upcoming another uh, series on how to connect with your dead on your own, which really does work. And it's pretty awesome. And um, that's why I like doing um, those kind of sessions with um, all of you because or with people because um, Helping in a mediumship session or all my sessions, I help you learn how your intuition works. And that helps you set up your own rituals for connections to your loved ones. Um, uh, Elaine, I don't know what will it be there. Um, so uh, most of the time our loved ones are doing really well. Sometimes they're just resting up, you know, um, transitioning out of the body is is a huge deal. I mean, the soul is no longer connected to the body, so it needs to wake up a little bit. So, um, and that can go on for some time for us since time works differently for the dead than it works for us. So um, tap into how your intuition works most strongly and that's your best way of connecting with your dead. Uh, Carmen, what's going to happen to the USA? Um, I don't know if you mean now or in the future, um, but for several years, at least, I've seen the United States breaking up into individual nation states, much like Europe. Um, in looking at it, I think that's not such a bad idea. Um, it's kind of scary <laughs> thinking about it because we're used to 50 states, you know, um, but I see it breaking up into regional states that are more suited to the people living in them agriculturally, um, uh, economically, um, socially and politically. And um, and that can be a good thing. You know, um, I don't advocate it. I just see that happening in the future. I don't know whether to think that's good or bad. I just I think that that's the way that we're going. Um, and if you look throughout history, there aren't very many um, nation states, if you will, that have lasted very long in terms of the time of human history. So um, 
that doesn't have to be a problem for us. I think we can come together with people who are or are not um, in, um, excuse me, United States citizens, but what we have here, like in this community here that Home Times has created for us, we have a connection, mind, body, and spirit together, um, believing that um, we can be together and work together and our energy and our love out in the world um, will make a difference. Um, somebody just asked a quick question. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Uh, Liz, Liz, you're about to put your house up for sale. Um, I just heard wait till December 1st. Um, it is hard for things to um, sell during the holidays. Um, and again, love yourself first, Liz, and um, hang on to those little boys. They're delightful. Uh, okay. Sarah, you feel a certain spirit hanging around you lately. Um, I would put up good energy boundaries. Uh, you can just pull a white light around you or imagine yourself in a pillar of light. Um, every single person needs to have a good relationship with their spiritual team. Um, at least one spirit guide who will help moderate um, whatever comes at you and um, takes a look at things for you um, to make sure that what's approaching you is benign. People who are whose intuition runs towards feelings, so you're feeling the feelings and emotions and even the thought and hearing the thoughts of other people around you, they tend to be people who attract just um, beings that are wandering around, including the dead who haven't moved on. And they're just attracted to you because you're more open and be more easily, um, can more easily communicate with them. So trust your gut on that. Trust uh, how you feel about that. Make sure you develop a good, strong relationship with a spirit guide to help you through that. Um, Gina, I, am, I don't... Uh, think that angels inhabit us. Um, in fact, I'm hearing a big, huge no on that from uh, the angels that I work with. Um, the only beings that, that I'm aware of that can really inhabit us are not ones that you want to, so you need to clear, clear yourself out um, and, and uh, not allow that uh, kind of connection. Oh, here it is, Justina's Roots Man. Um, uh, is decision to travel abroad for work is best for you? Well, I would um, go with what feels good to you, but it looks really great to me. And I always encourage people to uh, explore the world beyond the boundaries of their own country. It really gives you an insight into how humanity is all the same and yet different. And it feels like uh, that could be kind of a nomadic experience from you, for you working in one place for a while and then another. Um, but it feels like you're open to that and your sense of humor and your self-confidence will really help you make new friends all over the world. So I see a real positive in that. So, uh, wow, we're running close to uh, running out of time here. Um, oh, somebody wrote a question and I can't read that. Um, Mary, I'm so sorry that you lost your daughter. Um, I, you know, as I said here in the broadcast, I lost my brother. Uh, my parents never recovered from that. Um, and I, I just, I agree for you. I know how hard that is. Um, do you know that uh, regardless of the situation surrounding her death, that that bond of love between you never goes away? and nourish that by remembering the happy times. And you have this community here surrounding you and um, pushing you towards really um, being part of the community and um, never failing to love yourself first, which is so important and will help you as you continue to grieve. It will always be a huge um, thing in your life and it should be. And I'm sorry um, that you had um, really a terrible time. I, I can't even imagine it. Um, I was not fortunate enough to have my own children. And, uh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. 
a car accident. Um, and that means it happened really fast and you didn't really get a chance to say goodbye. And I'm um, one of the things that I would point out about that is that that's a shock for them as well as for you and that it doesn't matter how much time has passed since our loved ones have died. You can simply tell your daughter, I love you. I'm so sorry. This happened. You died on this day in a car accident. It's okay for you to go on to the afterlife. Um, enjoy your afterlife and we will meet again. But you still have that heart connection now and that soul connection um, because she's part of your soul family. So I hope that gives you some comfort. And we're... Um, Oh, Edna, thanks. I love, I love energy from Puerto Rico. I've never been there, but I have friends who are from there, so that's great. Um, so for all of you who are asking really tough questions here, I do do private readings, um, even as short as 15 minutes, and sometimes that's all it takes. Um, Maggie, I hope um, I do understand depression. I understand how a loss and just daily life can weigh us down. Dawn of the angels, you're right. Love never dies. And yes, she does marry. That's good. I'm glad you're getting signs uh, from your daughter. Um, I always laugh about uh, signs and I say signs and synchronicities. I, I don't really believe in them. And then they happen and I'm going, well, that's good. <laughs> so have a sense of humor about the signs because a lot of times when I'm in private sessions with clients, the dead are laughing about the, the jokes they like to play on their loved ones. So um, they're having a good time with you and they're also trying to comfort you. And isn't it wonderful, right? Isn't it wonderful that they can do that? Um, so Maggie, I'm sorry um, you're depressed. I do understand that. Um, I've certainly suffered from that myself with the traumas in my own life. And that's why I talked today about hope, by choosing hope. It has to be a conscious choice. It's just like reaching out and grabbing onto it and holding on to hope because things change. But if we hang on to our anger and our fear and our depression, we get locked into that cycle. So whatever it takes to get out of that, um, clearing your house, clearing yourself energetically, um, I have a process called soul progression clearing that helps people um, go for that. And, um, you know, we do have, all of us do have links to our ancestors. So some of that is trauma and some of that is really support. So I, I urge you all to call on uh, your ancestors for support or connection and to keep us all moving forward. So we're running out of time today. So, um, Janine, keep at it. Um, there are lots of, uh, excuse me, companies right now. It's the holiday season. Um, get out there and uh, try for a part-time job. And um, that'll get you through till that time. And uh, blessings to you and keep joining us every week. Robin Gray, you're trying to buy a house. Will it come through? Looks like the second house after this one, but maybe this is the second house you bid on. The number two house um, looks like that's a possibility for you. Um, I don't know where you are in the world. It can be really um, tough. So Liz is talking about flying out of your body. Um, that's called astral traveling. Um, and what you need to do if you don't like it. Um, and it... Um, there's a lot of stuff we can't even talk about in one session on astral traveling. Um, tell your spiritual team that you don't want to do it. And when you go to bed at night, say, I'm not astral traveling. I'm staying in my bed and I'm staying asleep and I'm staying connected to your body because you need the rest. And um, it can be a very startling experience. I know when I first experienced them, I, I didn't even know what was going on. You know, um, So we are out of time for questions today. Um, and Tim, you were asking what's causing all the heaviness with everyone so edge and unangry. Is it something we should be doing to increase the light? Yes, that's what I was talking about when I opened the show today. 
choose hope. Um, it sounds really trite. Um, choosing hope, um, a daily practice of gratitude. And, you know, I used to think, oh, that just is too easy, right? I choose gratitude. But you know what? It works. Choose gratitude. That makes you part of the light. It helps you get balanced and grounded and settled. And um, the rest of the people, you know, um, there's a, what is it, a, a kind of like a, a joke, but kind of a curse. May you live in interesting times, like Chinese proverb or something. Um, we do live in interesting times. We're going through a massive change, uh, metaphysical, spiritual change. It's mind, body, and spirit. And it's um, people who have chosen fear, and um, they will let anything um, terrify them and turn them away from love and light. And that's why I say choose love, choose hope. Um, those are real things, and they really do make a difference. So for those of you who have asked here, um, there should be a, a link to my website um, there in the credits. Um, but you can find me here on Facebook at The Practical Intuitive. You can also find me at my website, robinfritz.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z.com. I offer personal and business intuition, mediumship, animal communication, space query, past life and between life regression, soul progression clearing, which will help a lot to clear out blockages. No judgment on what those blockages are, just clearing them out. And that heavy space they occupy, we fill up with healthy energy. So find me at my website. I do intuitive readings as short as 15 minutes. Um, but we can set out a block of time of an hour or more for those looking for things like past life regression. Now, um, I do want to leave you with the crystal of the week this week. And this, isn't this beautiful? It's also covered in dog hair. It's kind of annoyed with me for letting it be covered in dog hair. This is Stibnite. Um, I love shiny things. I'm kind of like a magpie. And Stibnite looks like stainless steel or pewter um, and it is a um, also be aware that it's toxic so I'm going to have to go um, wash my hands after I put it back to where it sits um, but stibnite is a great crystal that supports transformation and for those of you who are looking for jobs looking for income looking to connect to your loved ones whatever it is transformation is what will help you do that so Again, I'm attracted to it because of shiny things, but um, this helps you stay balanced. It helps you support change. Um, be very sure about working with it. Uh, thank you, Dawn, for that connection. Um, it can knock you off balance if you're not paying attention, so it will help you focus, and it helps you uh, move forward by supporting change. It also dispels negative energy and entities. So for those of you who are feeling things in your home and you're not liking it, um, and at least imagine a piece of stib, uh, stibnite supporting you. Um, of course, courts will always do that. Um, so uh, if you're using he doing heavy house clearing, that's great. But just remember, um, you can't make a crystal essence out of this. Um, like you would drink or use on your body because um, you have to wash your hands after using it, which I didn't know when I purchased it. But I love this crystal. I love how beautiful it is. So again, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, you can find me again at my website, robinfritz.com. Um, you can also join me on my radio show every Monday afternoon at 2 Pacific Time, 5 Eastern at ometimes.com. It's the practical, intuitive mind, body, spirit for the real world. And one of the reasons I chose hope today as my topic to talk about, it is my great honor to welcome Dr. Anita Sanchez on my radio show this afternoon. She combines um, indigenous wisdom with current life changes. And she's going to be talking about the four gifts that help us um, move forward in our life path. So it will be an awesome afternoon. You can also uh, call into my show to ask a question of her. When I have a guest on, you're welcome to call in to chat with a guest. When I don't have guests, you're welcome to call in and ask for a quick reading on the phone or just to share your thoughts. So I appreciate you joining me today. May Fallon's energy support you and boost you up. 
throughout the week um, boost the United States this week in um, the election changes that we're about to make and everyone around the world to help you be your best. Choose hope, it matters. So cross your hands on your heart. Breathe in, feel that energy flooding your system. It's the energy of the goddess. Breathe into the palms of your hands and then cross your hands back on your heart. Feel yourself getting grounded and balanced, ready for the day. Um, for those people whose questions I've missed today, come back next week. We will share, I'm, I'm here every week um, until right at the end of the year. We're going to take a few weeks off uh, around Christmas and New Year's. But come back each week or send me questions you'd like me to cover here or topics that you'd like to cover. Thank you for joining us today. Take care. Have a great week and we'll see you next week.